here it is in all of its glory the Bosch 80,000 BTU gas furnace it is paired with a is it five ton Bosch inverter heat pump outside got a four ton I believe four ton oh my goodness I can't read right um three and a half three and a half ton no it is four i'm dumb i'm reading this number up here it's four two four eight this is four eight though so it's a four ton evaporator coil and they were pushing it with how much room we had in here that, that supply plenum uh because that's where that's how much room we got but it does okay there's a diverter up there uh the static pressure with a brand new filter checked like right at 0.55 i think you don't usually want to go over 0.5 but with it not being that high, I was okay with it. I uh, wasn't really stressed out about it. Um, it was tight. It's because we didn't have a lot of room from how the house was built. As you can see, it's just really tight in there on that side, on the back side, and down there. How the old furnace sat, uh, it actually sat on a little bit of a bigger box. And the air filter just went into the side of it. It was a 24 by 24. The Bosch is actually bigger, especially with that evaporator coil to get more efficiency out of it, uh, especially with the heat pump side of it in the winter time. You get a lot more efficiency out of it being a little bit bigger coil. I think the original was a three and a half ton rud, which it lasted 20 years without almost ever having a problem. It got dirty and then like the condenser got dirty outside and it made it go out, which that actually took a long time. Ruds are notorious for getting dirty and causing issues is because they collect a lot of stuff, but it those were tanks. That rud was a tank, I'll give it that. But as far as the Bosch goes, they are a little bit bigger on the evaporators, kind of like the Daikins, um, but I'm usually, I'm okay with it. I got the same thing in my house, just mine's a three ton. Uh, we did go with the April Air. Uh, I love April Air, as you'll come to find in the future. Um, the April Air filter, and that's it. That's our little return. There's an opening on each side. And like I said, we had point about 0 0.55, 0 0.56 uh, total static pressure. So that wasn't too bad. The only thing I know I'm gonna hear flack about, and I, I understand I don't really like it that much either, but there are thousands like this, this is the gas line. Uh, you're usually supposed to hard pipe it inside coming off the gas valve. And then you can tie a flex on to that, but you're supposed to hard pipe going inside. It's, I don't like it, but I'm not gonna change it. I'm not really worried about it just because there are thousands of them out there, but I know I will hear flack about it. I did not do the install though. Um, some of our really good installers did and they used to do that. I think they're getting away from it though, but I didn't install it. The only thing I did is I finished up the, the furnace part of it. I did finish up the intake and exhaust pipe and I hooked up the LP kit for it and then made sure that all worked. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to pop these covers off and let's take a look and see what this Bosch looks like inside. All right, you ready? Here we go. Well, bam This is the Bosch 80K furnace. What I personally like as a technician is this uh, clear plastic cover over the secondary heat exchanger. Uh, Part of it. You can actually see the moisture inside of it. And I'm sure you could see it if it was blocked up too, if the trap was clogged up and it just water just be sitting in there. You could easily see that. That's kind of neat. I've never seen one before. I think Bosch is the first uh, group to do that, first company. So I like that. Everything's pretty straightforward though. Uh, not a whole lot of difference compared to many other brands. Um, I've already compared it once to a Daikin. Um, I actually like the Daikin gas furnaces um in most cases there's a couple things i don't like about them uh, but one thing i've always loved is their exterior mounted uh, drain trap uh, which this one has too but there's not this one's not open daikins have an open top where you can put water down in them i don't know if i really like that all the time because they seem to be more susceptible to dirt and dust getting in there but i do like the exterior mounted drain traps i like it so they're easier to clean and the other thing i like about the daikins and the bosch is if i do want to flush out that trap it's super easy as a tech for me to just pop this off or pop this one down here 
off and I can put my bottle to it. I put, I make a bottle with uh, like a water and chemical, like a little uh, drain tablets. I put that in one of my bottles, let it dissolve, and then I'll flush it down that pipe and it flushes the trap out and then goes out. But that's a, that's a good way to clean them, I found, if you're just wanting to do yearly maintenance. Of course, if it's like a first time maintenance in like five, six years, you want to take it apart and actually clean it out good, make sure you get the gunk out. But as far as after that, if you're doing it yearly, I usually just do that and that really blows it out good. You got your standard little White Rogers uh, two-stage, two blah, blah, two-stage gas valve here, a high and low. Uh, so like I said, not a whole lot of different. This is a legacy system, uh, non-communicating. Uh, that's the cool thing I'll talk about here in a bit is that Bosch is all legacy with a con uh, inverter heat pump compressor outside. So I'll tell you what that means later, um, but they do not have communicating systems out here. But in a lot of furnaces, everything is pretty much the same. I think the most popular brand of gas valve is usually White Rogers. Uh, there's White Rogers, Honeywell, Gemini, which I think Gemini is uh, just an off-brand name of like White Rogers, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong there, but White Rogers is by far the most popular one. I'm not saying that's a good thing, because just like anything else nowadays, anything, everything's made out of junk anymore. So I swap out all the gas valves about the same amount. I don't really know if any of them are that better compared to the other ones. So just food for thought, like don't blame the furnace because there's like maybe three or four gas valve brands out there. And honestly, to me, they're all junk. The only company I think that has their own, I think, I don't remember, Heil's Smart Valve is, I gotta look, I can't remember that. I think Heil might have a Smart Valve that's their own, but it's super expensive anyway, because that's their main board uh, that controls everything. So the smart valve is expensive, but anyway, I'm getting on a tangent as always, but yeah, white Rogers, it's fine. I don't have really any main complaints against them. Another thing that's really standard is just this Fasco inducer. A lot of brands use Fasco. That's another one of those kind of like white Rogers. They're just interchangeable. A lot of them are, uh, a lot of companies use Fasco. So nothing really big about that. Well, like I said, I honestly see a lot of similarities between this and how the Daikins are made. Because I like, like I said, I like this kind of drip leg style. I, I see very little issues out of that kind of drain system. I don't really care for uh, a con. I'm not talking about them today, but one of the cons I, I have against Carrier, I love Carrier's product. One of the things I don't like is their itty bitty trap that sits down here is as far as the technician goes it's it's a pain in the rear usually to get it out of there especially if it's got the pipe going across this bottom um and there's not an easy way to clean it you have to take it out to clean it if i'm just doing like that like i said that you know yearly cleaning after i've done the main one you know the carriers that had the trap right here that goes down to the blower compartment you can take them out every few years and clean them but besides that i just hook on a, a tube I have on it even and then flush it out the same way that I can these um, but the newer carrier models they have the small trap that's built in right here you gotta take a screw out and the two hoses and then you can get it out clean it's not it's just a pet peeve it's not really a big deal it's, I'm just saying as far as ease of maintenance I like this style a little bit better so moving on uh, up everything up here though this is all pretty much the same as anything else there's four burns got an lp kit uh, flame sensor over there igniter over here so pretty straightforward i do like that everything's easy to get to and that's the other thing that i like about bosch and daikin i'll give them credit is i like how easy it is to get to both of those the flame sensor and the igniter because on some models you got the exhaust is really super tight up there and the Gas line's usually super tight, and it's a pain to try to get to both of those, or at least one of them. Uh, so I love that this is super easy to get to, as far as the technician goes. Now the fun part, the main control board. I actually like this. I, I thought this was a neat setup the first time I looked at it. I mean, it's in, there's not a whole lot of differences between most of them. Uh, right here, we have Y1, Y2, 
uh, W1, W2, R, G, and Common, which I am utilizing all of them. I have uh, two stages of cooling, which I'll explain that again here in a bit with the uh, inverter heat pump. Uh, I have both stages of heat, so and that's controlled by the thermostat. Uh, you can also uh, have the board control that um, basically how if you if you only had one thermostat going upstairs or one w wire you didn't have enough to do w1 and w2 uh, you can tell the board to basically control it most systems have that carrier obviously has that daikin goodman have it everything everybody has that you can tell the board to control it if it, you don't have enough wires it basically has two different options like this one i think looking on there oh sorry so off 10 minutes auto or 20 minutes pretty sure is what that means so it'll run w1 for 10 minutes 20 minutes or auto basically the board uh, figures out how long it usually takes to heat the house and then it'll kind of wing it um, just doing a guess but that's irrelevant in this case because i have w2 but it is nice to know if you are installing this or looking at getting in your house and you don't have enough wires ran upstairs you can still use utilize it, but I do see a lot of times companies will install this. We're pretty good at it, but I still catch some of ours even uh, where they'll that we installed a furnace, we didn't have a W two wire, and they just jump it out, and they don't have it set up over here either. So I'll, when I do the maintenance, you know, usually that's why we we do two free maintenances. It's for uh, other people to put eyes on it, and make sure everything looks good to go. I'll usually take those wires off and then make sure the board is set up to actually do both stages because that's more about comfort. Um, it provides better comfort and even heating for the house so you're not short, short cycling. It's, it's a nice thing to be able to provide, um, especially if the furnace might be a little too big uh, for the house, which usually it's sized correctly. But either way, it's still a thing about comfort usually. But I like having W1 and W2 running both here i think is one of my favorite parts just because i like the ease of it usually like the board up here will have um, most boards have it up here they'll have high high heat low heat low cool high cool um, but this is neat though because they have that up here all these terminals so this is ecm so that there that tells you and i like this tag here it tells you what each one of them is so you can look at that for a second maybe if i get the glare out nice <laughs> uh, then you come down here though and you can choose which speed you want to run so across here on these terminals you have the top part is your blower speeds from slowest to fastest uh, you got your yellow blue red purple gray and gray is the highest speed across this tag here it tells you what they recommend you run each one of these at uh, so the only thing I did different, I do have low cool and low heat, both, there it is, low heat. I got them both going there as it says, uh, but I did move my, what was it, my high heat was, no, my, yeah, high cool was supposed to be right here, but I pushed it up here uh, since I got a heat pump outside. I wanted it to run the same higher speed too, and that actually helped out. But you bet you set it either way, even with the tag, you set it on proper delta T, um, for air conditioning and heat, uh, which actually the heat pump outside fluctuates uh, depending on your pressure temperature coming back on the suction line or the liquid line in the winter time. Um, so it actually fluctuates and judges off of that. So if you speed the blower up, which is all we do in here, the heat pump will actually bump up the hertz on the compressor and make it run higher. That's all it's doing though is the air as it kicks up the heat pump compressor outside will actually speed up too and will kick into a higher stage. Very common style blower though. It's just the, oops, sorry, I think I had the mic covered. <laughs> anyway, it's just the X13 style uh, blower motor. Um, very common on a lot of ECM. They're, everything's going to ECM and they are more expensive than uh, PSE motors, but it is what it is. I mean, they're, they're having to go to that from the government. Uh, PSCs tend to last longer and they're cheaper, but the ECMs are more efficient and I do kind of like them uh, just because you can do a lot with the speeds. I like how it ramps up quietly too. 
and that's about it uh, we do have a couple controls uh, back there as you can see I might let's see if I turn on a flashlight I don't know if I'm smart enough to do that hmm I don't, oh, I'm wearing shorts I don't even have my work pants on hang on let me go find one kind of technician doesn't have clothes on my gosh come here there we go we got a flashlight all right back in the first here we go okay what are we looking at oh so yeah there's a, a little limit back there uh watching the temperature which i think uh that's also used and it's more for the other applications like if you have it sideways i think it's more used not so much in this case but it is there is there one on that side too Ah, oh, there is. Yeah, there's one on both sides. Neat. So those are auxiliary uh, high temp limits. The main temp limit is right there. Of course, those are auto resetting. Uh, the ones on the side are rollouts. Uh, and they trip and they have to be manually reset. But this is the Bosch gas furnace. I hope I'm not terribly boring you. Like I said, I did pair it with the April Air. I love April Air. I like their technology. This filter is actually getting a little dirty, but eh, I'm going to let it go a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, we got gap on each side, so it'll breathe. Uh, I personally just love April Air. I like the technology, how these lock in here, and uh, not much slips past those. These actually stay fairly clean, especially this one, because it's got a little bit more pull from down here. The bottom, of course, is where we have our highest static pressure compared to the supply side. But not that big of an issue. So I am going to button this all back up. And in just one second, we're going to be outside. Here, here we go. And, and we're here instead. Um, so the video that I had started a long time ago ended up being way too long. I had issues with an app I was using and this phone. It's just, it can't handle that much storage. So I'm going to make a separate video talking about the heat pump. So this is basically everything going over the gas furnace, uh, the, at least the one that's installed here. I have the same setup at my house. I might go over it too. If anybody's interested in it, just let me know. Um, so going over the furnace, if there's anything you guys have questions about, uh, please leave it down below. And then uh, if you're interested, I'll also, like I said, go over the heat pump and just kind of explain everything going on with it and what Bosch has to offer in the non-communicating inverter compressor systems. So please leave a like and a comment and I hope you guys have a great day.